And you can call me Uncle Strooch. I'm Webby. <laughs> Actually, I I'm Lux. <laughs> and Ember. And this is our thoughts on Disney's DuckTale Reboot, Season 1, Episodes 16 and 17, Day of the Only Child, and from the Confidential Case Files of Agent 22. The second episode, which we'll get to, is really awesome, but this first episode was just so darn cute. <laughs> and the funnest part about the episode is like, so how are their days going to go wrong? Because you knew it was going to happen. But it's one of the things I like about the Disney reboot, that they're actually individuals. Because in the earlier iteration, they were basically interchangeable. Yeah, they were copy and paste. Except Pretty much. They were just recolors. Except for there was this one episode with, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was Louie. It could also be Dewey. But there was an episode where um, the brothers, or at least one of them, was trying to be an individual. And, they were ha and he was having issues with it or something. And he ends up, all the brothers get kidnapped and put in a room. And somehow they figured out a plan to only get two of them out. Because one of them had to stay behind and pretend to be the other three. So he set up a mirror, a set of mirrors. So it looked like there were three in the room. And he pretended to be all of them waving at them while the other two did something to get them out or something like that. That's all I really remember from the episode. Well, that's pretty good. But, you know, it's nice because in the earlier iteration, they were all junior woodchucks. Now, Huey seems to be the only one who's interested. Louie's all about smoozing and money and... Dewey is just wants to be acknowledged for being awesome. And how many Late Night with David Letterman references could we fit into that little recording? Yeah, I was like thinking about that going, hmm, is he referencing talk shows in general of that format or just David Letterman? Specifically David Letterman. The way the introduction was, the introductory music, the posing in front of the stage, the cuts over to Paul Schaefer in the band. Which was really neat. I like how they were cutting back and forth and doing that. But they still left a little bit of him running into shot sometimes. And they other times they didn't. So it felt a little bit organic like that. I also like how somehow he was talking over himself as the announcer. Because <laughs> you didn't see his mouth moving at all. But you still hear him announcing. Well, he might have had that pre-recorded to play back. Ah. Because obviously he's been planning this demo tape for a while. Definitely planning it for a while. He's like, finally, I can do this. I have a feeling his brothers would still do it, but he was afraid that they would really heavily judge him, which they probably would, but then they'd go along with it. Because, you know, he realized that, ooh, I probably should have thought about guests before I ditched them. <laughs> uh, and having his brothers on would have been really interesting, <laughs> especially Louis. Hey, gonna make you a star, kid. Much better than uh, the deal you got going on right now. Both of us can be rich. And Louie is like, the second you saw that kid, you should have run. Not just that. The moment I saw that bracelet, I'm like, yeah, that's going to be magnetized or something. I'm like, that's not a bracelet. That's a collar or handcuffs, depending on which way you choose to interpret the imprisonment. I was like, yeah, that is your, you cannot get out of here. Also, I didn't realize how he was phrasing it when he first opened the box, but apparently he meant friend present as in... Louis is now his present. Yeah, and apparently money corrupts and absolute money corrupts absolutely. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were like, he was a sweet child. <laughs> and then his... Grandmama died and left him all his money. And he went crazy. So, only thing there, as a minor, he can't actually do that. Yeah, the parents would, well, the kid would inherit it, but the parents would legally be the people who would handle it till he was whatever an adult age is in that universe. Yes, so by saying in that universe, the rules could be different in that universe. He could have had instant access to the money. Hmm. But in this universe, it would have been managed by his parents or by a trust fund until he was of age. And at most, he would have gotten an allowance. So unless the allowance is enough that 
it let him do all of that. Yeah, it kind of reminds me how when you leave an inheritance to an animal, all the inheritance goes to taking care of the animal, but it also pays for the t caretakers and they get a portion of it to help take care of the animal. They're basically considered an expense for taking care of the animal. Just really fun and terrifying and the whole part with the Beagle Boys was really fun, especially like, you're our new brother now. Just the combination of them actually getting treated well by someone and Huey having people who will listen to him because he's showing them how to do these things. Mm, I love the, oh, I wish they didn't listen so well to me. It's like, oh, I can't believe this knot is perfect. Louis never would have tied a knot this good. How am I supposed to undo this? And they were doing so well until they went, we kidnapped someone for you, boss. Because <laughs> Huey has such a straight moral compass. There is no deviation for Huey. Because, really, he's like, Beagle Boy, so Im impending death, merit badge, impending death, merit badge. Because <laughs> he was okay with his life being threatened. And he's somehow like, well, I, I do like the whole, how the whole thing started. Like, you can't set a trap right. You know, if you would have just done it this way. If, I am, if I'm going to fall for a trap, it better be a good one. It's like, seriously. It's like going back to Monster Arts Inc. It's like, okay, if you're going to threaten me, do it properly. Though it does make me think that actually may come up in the future. Where, like, they all get stuck in a trap. And everyone's like, how did the Bitco Boys get so good at this? And Huey goes, that may have been my fault. Or Huey may get a slight pass from those two as a thank you for teaching them. Hmm. Possible. Possible. But Louie did the important thing of getting those three particular Beagle Boys reunited. That also reminds me about the part of Dewey being stuck in the closet going, Why could you think of a plan? Oh, I'm technically you! Dang it! How about you? Could you sweet talk us out of this? I'm also technically you. Great! They have skills I need and I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. And then we find out Webby was inside the robot and broke it. But fortunately, Huey was able to fix it. And is now using it as his own personal hover pod. Well, why not? And just Webby's fears that the trio was actually breaking up permanently. Because that was her fear. And then they, you know, reiterated at the end, like, no, we're brothers. We're never going to break up. It's just we're individuals, too. Mm -hmm. We just wanted this day to be our individuals without having to worry about the other two judging us. Also, the, how much did you see? None. That's good. Starts singing the music. Like, yeah. Starts singing the theme, doing the dance. Yeah, yeah, she knows everything. I almost expected after Dewey asked that, that he would go, oh, okay, come on, be a guest. Like, I uh, don't suppose you'd be a guest on the demo tape. Because she'd be cool. This version of Webby is so much easier to deal with than the other version. Oh, yeah. So much better. Especially... The voice. You hear the voice of everyone. Well, you, you can't say everyone because Donald still has the same voice actor. Yeah, but Donald wasn't that present in the original series. No, he was very not present. But I'm just pointing out, still the same voice actor. Going strong, man. Also, thanks to one of our new commenters for... Reminding us of that. For confirming a fact. <laughs> it's nice to have new commenters. Wow. It reminds me, I need to answer some mail on my DeviantArt. Okay. <laughs> Uh, continuing with this episode or moving on to the next? I was just about to ask if you had any more points you'd like to go over. Uh, let's go back to Launchpad as troop leader because he crashed the bus and everyone else quit. <laughs> I love the, I didn't get to be troop leader by breaking the rules. And then you expect some, you know, moral thing. I got to be troop leader by crashing the bus and everyone else quit. I also like the little jab at the very beginning of that where... Three, three is great. It's a great number. Like hip, hip, hooray. I like these tripod. <laughs> and three cheers. And because Huey was the one who didn't want to do this only child day because apparently he can't be alone with himself. Mm. He it, does seem to have the most insecurities of the three. The others have insecurities, but he seems to like broadcast them the most. The others put up very good friends. But he's too transparent for that. Extremely honest, that one. Kind of like AJ without the, 
whole actually having a magical item that says, yeah, you have to tell, well, you have to be honest, which is sometimes different than telling the truth, even though that sounds weird. It can get very confusing. English, the language of everything. <laughs> Meaning it has Swedish, Japanese, Korean. It has a bit of everything in it. So it's very hard. Even before that, it's a very hard language. Because one word can mean several different things. Unlike, from what I understand, at least the stereotype, an Eskimo. Like 500 words for hello. No, we have the exact opposite problem. We have hello that means 500 different things. I think you're referring to the stereotype of 500 different words for snow. Ah. Uh. And most people stop there. But the thing is, it's describing different conditions of snow. If you're in a snowy environment all the time, you need a shortcut way to tell people how frozen the ice is, how deep the snow is, what the water content is, and you need to be able to say that quickly. So of course there are different words that mean different things, but when you go and translate it into other languages, you're like, this means snow. You're missing all the subtext. Yeah, I'm just saying that the English language. I should say American English, specifically American English. Uh, the King's English too, but yeah. So, moving on. To Agent 22. There are so many references in this episode, oh my god. Seriously, but let's start with the basic of final official confirmation that Mrs. Beakley was and possibly still is a spy. Mm-hmm. And both Fowl and Hush confirmed for in-universe, which were both entities in the Darkwing Duck universe. Which is interesting because Darkwing Duck so far in this iteration of DuckTales has only been confirmed as a television show. Yeah, really interesting. So does that mean Darkwing is actually an agent? He could be, you know, the TV show could be a front. And the fact that he could do all his own stunts. So, really could be a thing. You know, it could be one of those true-to-life things. He's like, you know what, I'm going to take this stuff and I'm going to make a TV show out of it so that I have a career after, you know, my spy days are done. Interesting, because I can, can kind of see that maybe Launchpad will interact with Darkwing in that way. Still waiting for that. Also wondering if it happened in the House of the Golden Gander episode, where we didn't get to see what happened with Launchpad. We just know a lot happened. Yeah, and apparently there's a girl involved. There's always a girl involved. Example. <laughs> uh, oh. So, confirmation of that, confirmation of that. Also, another character coming back. Uh, Ludwig von Drake. I love how they were... How oh, Ludwig von Drake and Mrs. Beakley were fighting. <laughs> well, not really fighting. It was mostly von Drake going, dang it. I have my presentation already, but no, you had to be up to date on everything. Okay. Well, I've got one last surprise for you. Meet your new partner. <laughs> oh, there's Scrooge in jewels. Oh, yeah. I tried, yeah, I did a little partying afterwards. Do you return these to the queen? Like, what were you doing with the queen last night? You know what? Second thought, I don't want to know. <laughs> Uh, also, I like how they show his age, or lack thereof, because <laughs> he's definitely younger, but he's still older in this, too. And I really like how they were cutting back and forth between current and past. And doing some of it in true, you know, black and white type flashback style, and doing some of it full color. Though even in the full color stuff, it was still kind of... I remember it's a term and it's where they, it's kind of an orange color over it. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's a particular type of style of filming something. It gives it age. Also, gummy bears. As soon as they, I'm like, that, wow, that gummy bears, gummy bears. And I like how they had the sound effects. They had part of the theme song, how the powers worked. So apparently gummy bears are now confirmed canon for this universe, but they happened in the past. The real question is, are there any more gummy bears? There might still be some around because it is the gummy way to never interact with humans. Except for those two in the TV show. 
because they came across the boy when it was out cold. And, you know, he's just a kid. He's not harmful. And then, of course, we need a villain, so we have to interact with him. But we didn't interact with him as much as we did with his goons, who were actual goons. So that's not really a lot of human interaction. Nope. But I like how Disney... I was going to say it's creating their own cinematic universe, but then I realized Disney owns Marvel, so... It's more of how I like that they're drawing on other aspects from their animated past and drawing them into this reboot. Everything about it. Also, the interaction between Webby and Scrooge is nice. And I like how they kind of fooled you in the ad for this episode. Where it looks like Scrooge was like, don't tell anyone Webby in the ad by the looks of it. But no, he was talking to Launchpad in the actual episode. Uh, I also like the fact that apparently Launchpad is a better driver when blindfolded. Because it was only when his blindfold slipped. That he crashed into something. That, that is, that is interesting. And, you know, I love how Webby is... You know, like, oh, no, you had your own thing. You know, it was running your business and this and grumbling. And, you know, I had my own thing of training and learning everything about you. Yeah, because that's totally not creepy. Like the tea. Knowing exactly how he takes his tea, right down to assuring him that it's the same tea bag that they've been using all month. I love the, ah, oh, saving money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because depending on how late in the month it is, that tea bag's pretty weak. Hopefully they've been freezing it after, not freezing it, but refrigerating it afterwards because re reusing tea bags can get a little, ooh. Yes, uh, your second steeping shouldn't happen too long after your first, and I doubt your tea bag's strong enough for a third steeping. The, the creepy part I was talking about, though, is when they were looking at each other. Well, yeah, that was creepy. Also, when she got right into his personal space after he picked up the, uh, the newspaper. Yeah. I think that, that getting into the whole personal space thing comes from a lot of isolation. Don't have a full understanding of uh, social norms. Also, was it just me or did Louis act a little drunk? Just a little. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure that was a, a joke to the fact that he probably drank way too many sodas. And wow, I can't believe there's enough episodes of this Ottoman thing for there to be a marathon. And then I go, oh, wait, let's look at TLC. Of course there is. Oh, yeah. The, the Ottoman thing was probably a daily show. Uh, I mean, like any of the shows on modern HGTV, TLC, there was basically not an episode a week. It was every single day. You're like, how many episodes did they film of this series? Holy sheesh. And then they do marathons where they can run them consecutively back to back, probably for a couple of days. Because reality TV is much cheaper. Oh, yeah. To produce. There's still scripts for it and everything, but it's usually vague outlines of, we need you to get this kind of shot. Or, do you know if you called this person and put them on speakerphone? Which, I, I don't get how people in real life think that's an okay thing. I know you've saw it in a TV show, but please... No. People will walk around in public on a speakerphone, walking with it in front of them. How is that more convenient than holding it up to your head and hearing them more clearly and them hearing you more clearly? Because that's how the phone was actually designed. Oh, and don't forget how most of the time the person that you've put on speaker is now getting a weird feedback of hearing their own voice two seconds after they say everything. It's highly distracting. <sighs> Reality TV. I'm glad it's kind of fading. Except if you're watching YouTube. There's a lot of that on there. Because, once again, it's cheap to produce. Example A. <laughs> yeah, we kind of produce this for free. The only thing we spend is time. And, and you know, electricity. Uh, yeah. And bandwidth. Yeah. Most electricity goes to the rendering, though. Oof. Man, the fan kicks in on my laptop. <laughs> I swear if I turned the thing on its side, it would take off. But back to the actual episode. Your granddaughter surprised me. <laughs> Has a lot of surprises in her. Also, granddaughter. Hmm. I'm like, trying to figure out the family tree and where's her parents and... She's been the granddaughter from the first episode. Because when she first traps Huey, Dewey, and Louie, she says, 
Oh, Mrs. Beakley's, you know, my granny. So we have that, but we don't have the in-between here. Is when did Mrs. Beakley have time to get married and have at least one child? Hmm. That is a very valid point to bring up. Because she was very busy being Agent 22. Probably during that. Probably. So that points to the likelihood of uh, it being another agent. Or a um, contact. Mm -hmm. Agent, contact, support staff, someone involved. And that child would have to be male for Webby to have the last name. Yeah, especially since they seem to follow the same naming conventions as this world. Because I bet Mrs. Beakley is not actually her full last name. Because Webigail is Webigail Vanderbeek. Beak. Beakley Vanderbeek. So it could go either way, depending on whether or not Mrs. Beakley's last name is actually her legal name. I thought it was Vanderquack. Yes. Uh, like Scrooge, I'm getting it wrong. Ah. Oh. That is an interesting point. He never corrected himself. And even though Scrooge would know her last name because of... That's the one thing he would actually know, right? Interesting. Yes. And I like this uh, way he set up the sentence. Having this and this, your favorite tea. But I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes, because you just hear him totally trashing her character and you're like... Okay, he's totally setting her up. The thing is, is it just a distraction for Black Heron? Or is he actually going to give her some direction? Ah, there's the direction. Steal the juice, use the powers. And it was done so well, too. I knew it was going to happen, but it didn't seem obvious that it was going to happen. Because I knew he was going to, like, give some direction to Webby. I was like, he's setting up for something. But it was such a smooth transition... And it wasn't such a harsh, a wink, a wink, that it felt forced. Because they can do that in a story, and you're like, yeah, wonderful job. You did that. It was supposed to be subtle, but no way in heck was it subtle. Scrooge did it subtly, but still enough that a kid could recognize what was going on on the TV, but it wasn't so forced that you're like, ow. Because we were given the information that her favorite drink is juice, and Scrooge got it wrong because he said it was tea. Like, no, I just did that to impress you. <laughs> like, juice. Oh, I'll remember next time. And then here's next time. Tea, but I don't... I like... Juice. Got it. Stealing it. <laughs> uh, that also reminded me of another spot of... Huck! Turns around. Misses. That was gonna be so cool. And also, no loose ends. And the robot's still around. Also, the robots. That was an awesome reference back to both the Beagle Boys and the robots they piloted at one point in the old series. And also, things got a bit dark there with the robots because the one went in the water, the one tried to rescue it, and then it turned around for vengeance on Scrooge. And I think the piranhas died from either the electricity when the robot fell in at that, that part, or they died from eating the other robot. Because it's a robot that's metal. That's not good to eat. Though apparently their teeth are really freaking sharp if they ate through metal. Well, you know, it was a foul lair. They could very easily have been modified piranhas. Hmm. The only thing we do know for sure is they, they were organic because they were all dead. I love how he's like, ew, this is almost as bad as when they were alive. And then Webby just swings over. It's like, why didn't Scrooge think about using the cane or something? Because in the pilot, he basically does that. Dewey does the whole thing where he's tripping off every alarm. And the only reason he's alive is because Donald has been holding a shield and protecting him from the fire blast. And then Scrooge just sails past it. <laughs> just really... Ah, uh, you took the easy way. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, supposed to work smarter, not harder. Ah, uh, we both have so much fun with this series. I love how Scrooge is pointing out, you know, most children would be terrified of impending death. Louis usually just cries. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, 
This show is so wonderful. And how excited and happy she is to see that she recognizes the bubble and she still greets it like, oh, hello there. Like, wow, Webby, you just, no fear. No fear at all. I would think if Scrooge hadn't have held her back, they wouldn't have been gassed. I also like how as she was helping him out and she was pointing out the reasons that, you know, they didn't know each other, he kind of like, oh, yeah, I do that. I think this more goes back into my theory of like him learning to trust his family more and the people he trusted before because of the wrong reasons are going to eventually turn on him and he has to turn to his family. And not to mention that line that Granny said not to bother you and if you wanted to, you'd reach out to me. It probably never occurred to him. Minor of all things, just the age difference of what could I possibly have in common with this young child? A lot. Yeah, especially with Mrs. Beakley's training. Woo! Except for the fact that the trio is more likely to cause trouble, overall you probably have more in common with Webgale. Though all four of them together, actually, correction, all five of them together counting Scrooge. Quite the force to be reckoned with. Oh yeah, his entire family, including Donald, is a force to be reckoned with. The whole McDuck line. <laughs> is incredibly dangerous. Except apparently Donald still can't figure out how to get out of the pantry. It just hasn't gotten mad enough yet. <laughs> if you need anything, Donald's in the pantry! <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure. Shh. Like, we're watching this. Also, you know, he's doing this rather emotional farewell of, you know, if I don't come back, it's been a pleasure knowing you. Okay, you guys truly weren't listening, because if you had been listening even the slightest, they would have chased after him. I think they were in a TV coma. They were definitely in a TV coma. Which I've never gotten into. I watched a lot of TV when I was younger, but I never got into the coma where I missed things that were going on around me. I do get ultra-focused. That's a different story, but I never got into a TV coma. And then, of course, the final loose end is like, Will we see Black Heron again? Because all that was there was the arm. And the moment I saw her stop herself with just the arm, I'm like, two things happened. One, she purposely disconnected herself. Or two, the force of her stopping herself ripped that arm off. One or the other. Either way, she survived and will be back again. You know, because it's going to be a real foul situation. Uh, yes. Also, you shush. <laughs> and... You know, Webby still having the potion, the fact that Mrs. Beakley knows the formula. Also, this explains why all the, there were all the non-native berry bushes on the island. Oh, yeah! I was trying to figure out that clue. I was like, why did they point that out? Oh, I get it now. But see, she didn't have the final page, so the berries at that time were probably not all of them. Or it may have been all of them, but she just didn't have the formula. But that's why there were a bunch of non-native berry bushes that were non-poisonous. I get it now. Also, little bit of animation thing that I think they messed up on, or was something that Scrooge specifically did to make a joke there, because who knows. When he plucked the berry off the bush, the stem was clearly left behind. So there was definitely no stem for him to be choking on. Also, the animation for him choking was great. Crawling over Mrs. Beakley. And she's like, and now you're dying. <laughs> no, worse. I have a stem stuck in my throat. That's worse than dying? Yes, because you still feel the pain. <laughs> that's, that's one of the great things. If you really pay attention to any line that says, like, or worse, expelled. She needs to get her priorities straight. No, you experience that. Death, you only experience until you're, well, dead. And then you get to find out what religion, if any, was correct. <laughs> or you're just floating around in space going, well. <sighs> that happened. <laughs> okay, final thoughts on these two wonderful episodes? Well, they were wonderful. We get a lot of character development. We get more backstory. A lot of callbacks. And... Is it just me, or did the rich kid's design remind you a little bit of the slightly chubby Junior Woodchuck that the trio hung out with on occasion, minus the glasses? I knew he reminded me of someone. And I think it might even be the same name. Duford? Not, no, Duford is Dewey, sorry. 
I can't remember the kid's name. But the character design reminded me. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That could be a thing. Hmm. Someone looked it up and please put it in the comments below. Because <laughs> that would be really cool if it is. Because I love to twist characters around in this series so far and it's awesome. I thought these two episodes were very well done. The first one was cute. <laughs> Uh, a joy to watch. This one, they love to deal out backstory in subtle but not subtle ways in this show. It's so well done. Very enjoyable. Can't wait for more episodes to come out. But we're going to. Yes, yes, because we, we don't want them to rush it. Because, well, just look at some other series. You've seen what happens with when they have to rush things or budget gets cut. We don't want to see that happen here. No. This has been our thoughts on Disney's reboot of DuckTales, episodes 16 and 17, Day of the Only Child, and from the confidential case files of Agent 22, a.k.a. Mrs. Beakley. Hey, another video, another outro. So what did you think? Let's get some comments going in the comments. Love having some dialogue. So you can do that and you can click subscribe if you haven't. Uh, please click like. And that covers pretty much everything before you leave this specific page. Uh, we have lots of other videos. We've tried to mostly organize them into playlists for your viewing pleasure. So that still keeps you on YouTube. Now, leaving YouTube, you can find links for Lux's art, uh, commission work, and financial support in the forms of Patreon and coffee. Patreon starts at a dollar, monthly poll for a sketch, and coffee works in increments of three. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.